So this six step sales framework helped me to close millions of extra dollars in sales. And it's just such a simple and easy methodology for increasing your profit margins and making sure you're closing more sales with less challenges. So this sales methodology is so simple and easy to use that you can incorporate it with your sales teams. I personally use it to close millions of dollars of extra sales and not have the whole hard, heavy conversation at the end where all the objections are popping up. It just gets super frustrating and super tiring for any person who's doing sales. This simple methodology will help you to close more sales because you're working on things in a different process than the way most people are taught how to do sales. Now, why did I create this? Well, because I had read all the sales books, I was doing a lot of phone calls, and what I found was that I would start the conversation, the customer would go, you know, we're looking at buying your product or your service. I would get excited because I'm thinking, I got this in the bag and then they ask the price. Then the next second, all these problems pop up. I need more time to think about it. I need to go ask my partner. So frustrating. And I used to end up doing a day of sales calls where I just feel frustrated, burnt out, and my close rates were really crappy. After reading all the books, checking everything out, looking at seeing what was online, I decided to create my own process in order to deal with everything up front instead of at the back end of the sales process. And I'll explain step by step what I mean by that and how it's massively going to help you to close way more sales and also to make sure that your profit margins are high because if you don't do the things that I'm gonna run through, you're then gonna to have to price compete with other competitors in the market and to the customer, it's gonna be a war on price versus quality and what you can deliver and how you can help them solve their problems. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna understand that the reason why I use the word decide is because as part of the sales process, we aren't trying to get a sale and we aren't trying to close them. What we're trying to do is get them to make a decision. So I don't care if someone says, look, this isn't right for me. Great. I don't have to follow them up 10 times. I don't have to call them 15 times. And you know, I know there's salespeople out there who say, yeah, you should still do that. But if you've got a pipeline that's full of people, you don't wanna be chasing people up I know if you're watching this, you've probably had it happen before where someone says, yeah, sounds great. Send me some information. And if you give me a call next week, I'll have an answer by then. And then you spend the next month to two months chasing them up because they didn't make a friggin' decision on the phone there and then. I wanna get to the end and have the person say, yes, this is for me, I wanna move forward, or no, I don't want this, this isn't the right thing for me, and then they say no, and I can just move them out of the pipeline or put them back into the marketing funnels. So that's why I use the word decide. Now the first one, and this is probably the most important and crucial stage, more than anything in the sales process, and that is you've gotta define why they're there. So we're gonna ask some questions straight up. Now, sometimes if I get a hot lead that's come through or even a warm lead, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the basic intro. Hi, it's Michael here from Mojo Human Performance. Then the next thing I'm gonna go, cool, how can I help? By doing this, they're gonna say, well, you know, I was searching for this and I was looking online and, you know, I'm not really too sure about what I should do and what I should buy. And you're gonna get them talking. That's what we wanna do here is we wanna get them talking. But while they're talking, we want to help them define and clarify the problem. Because if we're not helping them solve a problem, you're gonna have all the problems at the back end of the sale. And this is where salespeople go massively wrong. And I'm gonna give you two different examples here. The first one, customer A rings up. They say, you know, I've just been looking around. I need some help with, let's say you've got an electrical business. I need someone to come and wire up my house. I need to put in some new lights, blah, blah, blah. And you go, yep, excellent. I can come out and quote that work or yep, I can send through some information. That's great, but the customer's still just sitting there in limbo. Now in their head, they have a whole bunch of hidden questions. So it might be, is this person gonna rock up on time? Are they gonna leave crap around my house? Can I trust them? Can I not trust them? All these questions are gonna pop up in their head after the call. In sales call B, we're gonna do it this way, where we define the problem. We start the conversation, they say, you know, I need someone to come out, wire my house, I need to get some lights fitted. Excellent, okay, cool, we can easily do that. Now, before I move any further, what, you, you've obviously called around to some other people, right? What I wanna know is, what are your concerns? What are your problems? Now, they might say, look, I, you're the first person I've spoken to. And you go, okay, why us first? and then you're getting their feedback. Then you're gonna flip that around and you're gonna say, what are some of your main concerns? And they might say, look, it's just price, we don't have a big enough budget. Now that might be fine for your business model, it might not be. A lot of people say we're not a price competitive business and they don't wanna keep cutting prices, so you need to find that out up front. But once you define the problem by asking questions, it's a lot easier to solve the problem. The more you can get them talking about their frustrations, their stresses. So I'll give you some examples that I use as someone who helps people grow their businesses. So I normally get people who put through an inquiry, 
it comes across my desk, I hop on the phone, I give them a call and I say, look, how can I help? And they say, well, I wanna grow my business. Back in the old days, I go, cool, I can help with that. Then I spend 15 minutes telling them about how great our product is. And at the end, don't close the sale. What I do now is I ask them to define the problem. So I'll say, cool, what are some of your main concerns? And they might say, well, look, I'm stressed out at the moment because it's causing pressure at home with my family. You know, I get home from work, I'm stressed out, I'm caught up in my head. I can't hire good staff or I can't find good staff. And I say, cool, how long has that been a problem for? Oh, you know, it's been a problem for the last couple of years. Okay, what else are the problems? Well, you know, cash flow is a bit tight at the moment. Okay, so cash flow is tight. Are you still willing to invest in changing your business and, and getting help? Yes, I am. Okay, excellent. How long have you had cash flow problems for? Do you look at the numbers often? What sort of marketing do you have? What you're doing here is you're digging. The more problems you can find, the better it's gonna be for you. Something that a mentor told me ages ago is you really wanna make sure that the customer feels tension and friction in this part of the process because they need to feel the stress. A lot of people get really good at thinking that nothing needs to change. If you're one of those people that wanna make people feel good in the sales process, I guarantee you're gonna lose a lot of sales. You need to bring up all their crap and make them feel like they're stuck and they need your help and you're the person that's gonna help them solve it. Essentially in sales, we help people solve problems, okay? Just like the electrical business, we're helping them solve a problem because they want new lights in their house. Let's say they don't want their contractor to walk around with their butt crack hanging out. They wanna make sure that the person's got a police background check and they're not gonna steal all their crap in a month. You know, these are all the things that customers have in the back of their mind. Our job as business owners or as salespeople is to help them solve those problems. You can't solve problems if you haven't defined them. So I'm gonna keep digging and digging and digging and digging. I'm gonna spend most of my time in these top three areas or these top four before I dive into even offering them anything. So we define the problem, number one. Number two is we're going to encapsulate the problem. So normally what will happen is once you start digging around, you will find that a customer or a potential customer will then start to get confused and they're like, wow, we've got a cash flow problem, we've got a marketing problem, we don't know how to onboard staff, I've got stress at home, you know, I feel disconnected from my partner. Wow, this is all too much. So you don't wanna leave them there. You need to encapsulate the one main problem. Now, if you're really good at sales, you should be good at encapsulating a problem for the customer and saying, Here's the one main thing that we need to fix. And should we do that, it will start to create more flow in your life. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna encapsulate the problem, which means we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna give it back to them, to the customer until they say, yes, that's exactly my problem. Now, the great thing about following this methodology is that even at the end of it, if the customer goes, look, I don't think that this product is right for me or this service is right for me. The great thing is that they walk away feeling amazing about you and your business because you've helped them define their problem and they feel like they're understood because now they go, wow, I've actually found out what my real problem is. So we're gonna encapsulate the problem. We're gonna say, so it sounds like the biggest problem that you've got in your business is that you just haven't developed enough skills yet as a business owner to be able to solve so many of the complex problems that you've got going on. Is that correct? And they might say, yeah, actually, that's exactly what's going on. For the electrical person that I gave the example of before, you can say, so it sounds like you already know that any electrician is gonna be able to put the lights in, they're gonna be able to fit and wire everything up. But your main concern is, first of all, have they done a really good job? You wanna make sure that it's all compliant. And then finally, you just wanna make sure that they look after your house and treat it as though it's their own. And the customer says, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So we encapsulate it and then we clarify it. So you have to make sure you clarify it. Now let's say you encapsulate the problem and you go to clarify it and the customer says, oh yeah, sort of, I guess. Then what you need to do is you need to go back, define it better, encapsulate it and re-clarify it. So let's say now you're working with a builder and the person says, you know, I obviously wanna build a house, it's for my family, and you say, cool, what are your main concerns? What are your problems? The person says, well, you know, I'm just scared that at the end, I'm gonna be left with a whole bunch of hidden costs, and I'm just not sure, you know, builders out there have got a bad name, I'm gonna give money to you, there are builders going bankrupt at the moment, and so you're starting to define these problems. Then you're gonna say, okay, look, I understand that you're really, really nervous about moving forward. Are there any other concerns? And the person might say, look, I just wanna make sure that we have someone that we can communicate effectively with, someone that's sort of gonna hold our hand through the entire process, and someone who's gonna look after us. You know, we're a young family and so on. And you say, look, 
I understand that you're scared and you know, you, you're uncertain. I completely understand with everything that's going on in the industry at the moment, but we, we're gonna feed it back and we're gonna clarify. And that person might say, yeah, I guess that's it. Oh, I haven't quite got it yet. So we go back up and go, cool. Is there any other concerns? And they say, well, yeah, look, my family have said that, you know, last time they knew someone who built a house and the builder ripped them off and they scammed them. So, you know, my family are really against me building a new house. They say that I should go out and, and, and buy an, old, an older house and do it up. It's okay, completely understand. Why do you wanna build a new home? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna really define the problem again. We're gonna re-encapsulate the problem and then we're gonna clarify it until they say yes. So we keep going through this process until we have got that problem really, really clear and the customer confirms it and their tonality tells you that they've confirmed it. So, oh yeah, that's not a yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going through. Now you know you've got it. Also, by the time you've got to here, the customer now knows, likes, and trusts you. People only buy when they know, like, and trust you. If they don't know, like, and trust you, then they're probably not gonna buy from you. So we're building all the trust in here because they're, they're talking about what's really going on inside for them. And you've helped them so much to clarify everything and get everything out of their head. Most people just don't go that deep with people. And that's the reason why they don't close sales. So then what you're gonna do here is you're gonna imagine the dream. I'm gonna write that in here. So we're gonna imagine the dream. So in human behavior, I'm just gonna flip over the page here. So we're gonna go into a little bit of human behavior. The majority of people move away from pain and they move towards pleasure. In the sales process, what we wanna do is we want to find what their pains are, which are their worries, their stresses, their frustrations, and then find out what their dream outcome or their goal or their pleasures are. So when we come back to here, we want to get them to imagine the dream outcome. So you're gonna say, okay, so look, let's say that we were to do the electrical job for you. What's the ideal goal? Like, what do you really want? And get them to describe it in detail so they feel it. Here, we want them to feel stuck in the frustration and the pain and they're, they're bringing it all up. And then here, now they're starting to describe the dream outcome. So they're getting all into the feels. Also something in human behavior is that people buy with their emotions and they justify it with logic. Most salespeople try to sell a logical sale, which then means that most people don't buy because it's logical. They're gonna think about all the things that could go wrong. They're gonna think about, wow, that costs a lot. Oh, how do I pay for that? You're gonna get all those silly objections. So we wanna get them into the fields. So we're gonna imagine the dream outcome. Get them to describe it. So the person who comes to us and says, look, you know, I'm a business owner, I'm stressed, I'm frustrated, I feel disconnected from my family, cash flows crap and so on. They go through it and I clarify that with them. Then I say, look, what sort of business do you want? Some people wanna grow a $100 million business. Some people wanna grow a $10 million business. So you get them to describe the dream outcome. What's the core goal they're looking for? And don't just say, well, I just want my house wired and you know, I just want them to do a good job. Okay, why is that important to you? I know that most business owners feel like a fucking idiot when they go through and they do these steps because they're not used to communicating with people in their fields. They're used to just going, what do you want done? Yep, we can do that for you. Here's the quote, let's get it done. But that's also why their profit margins suck in most cases. And that's also why they lose a lot of sales or they're always competing with a whole bunch of other people in their field. If you really wanna stand out and you really wanna close high level people with good profit margins and have raving fans as customers, which we'll get to, you need to make sure you're following these steps. This here is the most important part of the sales process from here up. What I train my team and other business owners that we work with is you do not give price in most cases, sometimes if a customer just goes, look, I don't wanna talk, I don't wanna do anything, just send me the price. They're probably not gonna be your best customers anyway. I just do it and if they buy, they buy. But most of the time, by the time you do all this, that person likes you so much and trusts you so much that even if someone comes in with a cheaper price, they're still gonna go with you because they like you. So we go through this stage here, we get them into the fields, they've given you the pleasure, they've given you the pain, they've given you the dream outcome, what they want you understand what they're really going through. Only, only once you've done this and you've done it well, do you move to this part here. And this here is describe your solution. So we're gonna put here, describe the solution. And what that means is you go into the sale. Now I understand that you want your house wired. We know that you don't want people coming into the house, leaving a mess everywhere. You wanna make sure that it's all compliant. You know, I can film and show you the work afterwards so you understand what we've done. Does that sound like what you want? When they confirm it and they say yes, 
then you say, okay, cool. Now that I understand, here's what we can do for you. Okay, and then now we start to go through what most people call the sales process, which is how much it costs, how long it's gonna take, you know, what resources you need or whatever else you need, and then you close it off. The cool thing is if you spend 80% of your time here, you will only spend 20% of your time max down in here closing the sale. If you don't do this well, you'll spend 80% of your time trying to close a sale or trying to follow someone up and it just becomes an absolute pain in the ass. So we're gonna flip the usual sales processes that most people know and flip it upside down. 80% here, 10% here. So now what we do is we're gonna hop in and we're gonna describe the solution. You need the house white in February. It's probably gonna take two weeks to do it. I need three guys or three guys and girls on the job. What I might have to do is I might have to put together a quote. Do you mind if I come back out and go through the quote with you? So you might stop it here and then come back in and, and re-go through this again and close them. Or if you're closing them on that single call or in that single time, you keep going. There are two types of calls. There are sales calls and there's triage calls. In a triage call, you only get to here and what you're doing is you're qualifying the customer. Now, what I normally do is if I'm getting cold leads or warm leads, I will do a triage first. And sometimes you just get on the phone and someone's like, oh, I don't know what I wanna do and oh, yeah, I, don't, I just thought that this might be good and I just wanna sort of find out what you got. And you qualify them and you say, you know, which we do in here as well. So when we clarify, we wanna make sure that they're prepared to spend money. You say, you know, have you checked prices with everybody else? And someone's like, I can hire a coach for 30 bucks an hour and I go, okay, cool. Look, I'm probably not the right person for you, but I can refer you to someone else. And I close everything off there. I don't give a price. I don't do any of that. That's a triage. The sales call is going from start to finish again. So if I'm doing a sales call, I will then go back through and say, look, last time we caught up, you said that these are all the problems. Is that still the case? Yes. Okay, excellent. And you still want to fix that problem. You're still willing to invest in it. Yes. Okay, cool. And the dream outcome or your big goal is this. Is that correct? Yes. So now I've just re-clarified everything again. So they get back into the fills and now I'm gonna go into the close. So that's if I'm doing a sales call. The triage is just this part. The sales call is a whole thing. Now, if you've done a quote, you go and you do that. And then when you come back out, you might go through this again and then you close them off. So now we describe the solution. So here's the cost. Here's what you get. Here's everything that's gonna be involved in it. And you go through it. It should not take any longer than three to maybe five minutes max. The faster you can get through describing the solution and not making it overcomplicated, the better. And then finally, you execute the close. The best way that I've found is just to ask for the credit card details. And so I'll go through this and I'll give you an example. So we imagine the dream outcome. We're going back to the electrical person. By the sounds of things, I need to have three guys on site. You need it done in two weeks. So let me just quickly do some quick numbers. Perfect, I've got the numbers here for you. Now, in order to, to give you exactly what you want, it's gonna cost $20,000 to do it. We will film everything. We'll take some photos to make sure that you're comfortable. I'll also make sure that the guys and girls take their shoes off and that we look after everything for you. You don't have to do anything. After we get all the paperwork done, you don't have to touch a thing. I'll have everyone here on time, everything like that. If you have any problems, you come to me, okay? Does that sound good? Yes. Excellent, so is this something that you're willing to move forward with? Yes. Okay, excellent, what are your credit card details? And bang, you grab them. That's normally the close. I normally don't even ask them how would you like to pay? Because sometimes it gives them too many options. Now, sometimes someone goes, well, can you do a bank transfer? Depends on your policies and your terms and so on. We wanna do this relatively quick because if you've done a good job here, this part's easy. They already know what they want. They know that you're gonna help them. What I find is that most people in a sales process spend 80% of their time here and you get this bonus and you also get this and then you can do this and then, uh, but he, you haven't built any trust. So the person goes, oh yeah, cool, this all sounds good. This, yeah, but I'm still not sure. I don't know if I wanna buy it. I don't know if that's really, what, but what about this? And then they have too many questions. So by the time you go to execute the sale, they then bring out all their objections. Okay, cool. So now what are your payment terms? Okay, so then you go through payment terms and they're like, okay, cool. So if we were to start in February, how many people do you think you'd need? Oh shit, I need three people on there. Okay, then you explain that. All right, cool. Well, what I want to do is, um, you know, I might, I might chat to my husband or my wife and, um, you know, can you give me a call back next week? Yeah, I'll give you a call back next week. Then you give them a call back next week and they don't answer their phone and you chase them for the next month. And then when they do answer the phone, they go, oh yeah, I'm still, we're still sort of thinking about it. We're not sure if we want to do the electrical. Or Can you see now how this gets so sloppy because you didn't do that properly? If you want to close more sales, 80% here, 20% here max. So we describe the solution, which essentially is our product or our service. 
you run them through the benefits to them and then the features. You wanna be quick with the features. Most people spend way too much time talking you know, about all the features of the product, not the benefits. And as an example, the benefit of having a TV is that you wanna sit down with your family, you wanna watch movies on the weekend, you wanna have amazing sound, great quality, and you wanna all connect. That's how you sell a TV. What will happen though is normally when you go into a TV store, they sit there and they tell you about the high definition sound that's got 10 terabytes of data, you know, it's got 400 pixels per fucking nanometer. And you as a customer are standing there like, shit, I just wanna watch TV with my family and feel good. So sell the benefits, not the features. Car ads on television are normally the worst for it. So they're talking about the 4.2 liter twin cam V6 engine. Most customers are sitting there going, I just wanna put my family in it and make sure the car doesn't break down and that it's safe and that if we get into a car accident, we're not all gonna die. You've gotta know that people want the benefits not so much the features. We describe the solution, and then again, we execute the close. If they bring things up, they say, I need some time to think about it. This is where your closing skills come in, and I'll do another video on closing, but it, you might just say something like, okay, cool. Normally when someone needs time to think about it, we know that time doesn't make people make better decisions, but information does. So it seems like there's something, there's a bit of a gap there between the information that I've given you to be able to make that decision. What's your concern? Like what other information do you need to be able to make that decision or something like that? I mean, most people have the same excuses as to why they don't do things. It's normally time, money, have to go check with someone. They're like the most common that will probably pop up, but it also depends on your industry as well. So if you take care of that and you ask the questions up here, it makes it a lot easier. Like up here, you clarify and you say, okay, so if we were to come to your house and do this electrical work, do you have to run that by anyone? Oh no, I'm, I'm the key decision maker. Okay, excellent. And do you have the money to start straight away or is it something that you need to put on loan? And because you're asking good quality questions, they don't pop up here. Okay, you learn that skill over time with your target audience. But that's essentially the decide method. And by the end, we wanna get them to decide. We wanna get them to make a decision. They're either gonna say, yes, move forward, no, if we do a good job here, if we're dealing with the objections, which there shouldn't be too many, they're either gonna say yes or no. If you're finding that objections are coming up a lot, it's probably because you haven't done this well enough. Now, like I said, the key important part here is I don't go into describing the solution, which is essentially selling the product, if I haven't done this well, okay? I will not go into this in 99% of cases if I'm doing a triage or if I haven't really defined the problem, encapsulated it, clarified it, and then got them to imagine the dream outcome. So just going through this decide method has allowed our sales to increase dramatically. I have to deal with less problems at the end and following people up and wasting time. It's also so easy to start to script this out. So if you've got a team of people, you can train them on the decide method, script it out for them. If you know your perfect avatar, or your perfect customer base, which we do in our business odyssey. We go through it, make sure people are really, really clear with their avatar, so that when you're scripting this out, you already know the common problems that they're gonna have, the common objections that they're gonna bring up. You really need to know more about your customer than the customer knows about themselves, and watch what happens. Your close rate will go through the roof, and also you'll be able to increase your margins because you'll feel a lot more confident closing sales, and you won't drop to the lowest common denominator, which is price. Most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them.